Welcome to the Lindsay and Tony podcast, where we talk about spirituality, business, and life experiences. In this podcast, we're bringing our private conversations to you. We believe that it's through discussion, action, and reflection that true change occurs. Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 112, The Art of Simple Living. Mr. Monsuno is a head priest of a 450-year-old Zen Buddhist temple in Japan, and he's also an award-winning Zen garden designer, and he has clients all over the world. He wrote the book, The Art of Simple Living, 100 Daily Practices from a Japanese Zen Monk for a Lifetime of Calm and Joy. So if you want to slow down to speed up in your life and you want more calm and joy in your life, this episode is for you. I hope everybody enjoys the show. Hi guys, welcome back. We're so excited that you're here. Today we're going to talk about an amazing book called The Art of Simple Living and it's 100 daily practices from a Japanese Zen monk for a lifetime of calm and joy. But before we talk about that, we want to say happy birthday to our little Romeo, who's our little love bug. He's five years old today. He's a great road tripper. He's a great travel partner, business partner, and little teammate for our family. So He's a connector. Great. Yes, he is. He brings a lot of love wherever he goes. So this book is important because we actually have been talking about it. I, I spoke with my, our masterminders, our business masterminders, about the power behind this book because it's so simple. And how do you feel about Tony? I'm- I feel great about the book because if you're somebody who's constantly going, 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 and you're getting a lot of things done and you feel like you're always on and you're always like moving, 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 which I feel like a lot of the people that watch this episode are like that. By the end of this episode, you're gonna understand the power of slowing it down to speed up. And I think that's the power of this book right here. Definitely. And the good thing about this book, whether you're a reader or not, it's something to buy. Um, And we'll put the link in the comments too with where you can buy this. But the good thing about this book is usually a chapter is probably a page or two. That's it. And you can seriously just open the book and get a message for the day. Um, And it's really powerful if you create some sort of routine, whether it's in the morning or at night and just read a page. It really does change your energy just by reading it. it. It sounds like there are simple things that wouldn't change you but they're so powerful just reading them. Well, that's the paradox. It's, it, it is the simple little adjustments that actually make the big changes. I feel like a lot of what we do with our clients and what we do just in, with our life in general is we work on dreaming bigger than we've ever dreamed before and then focusing on taking the tiniest steps mm-hmm. to actually start going that way. Right, that's true. And this is a perfect book, whether you're a business owner or not, you need this book yeah and it's in those tiny steps it's in those simple steps like what's in this book that gets you to where you actually where you're trying to go right in the first place like one of the examples that sticks out to me and we're actually gonna read you some of them too is a chapter a page or two about doing simple things that may take a little bit longer Mm -hmm. so when it sticks out to me when they talk about coffee beans so instead of running to the nearest Starbucks or Dunkin Donuts to get your coffee take time to grind your coffee beans at home and really enjoy that moment of of doing that and you could do that you know cooking over the fire slowing down in that way and it makes you appreciate the thing that you're doing every day because sometimes we run and we go we start driving through the drive through and grabbing a coffee really quick in a rush to go someplace but if you take the time to make this a meditative experience and a, a experience of gratitude, you start really not taking, you don't take it for granted anymore. So that one idea you just talked about, well, we we got this book, what, about a year ago, year and a half ago, I can't somewhere around there. it's already been that long. And we were in Cape Cod last yes. summer in August. And mm-hmm. what happened was... This actually wasn't in Cape Cod, was it? Well, no, that's we, we got the book before then. And this oh, is okay. how I know, because that thing you said about the coffee beans, Well, it also talked about something else with the coffee beans, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit more in a second here. But it's that idea sparked the idea for me. So I was in Cape Cod, I went rollerblading in the morning and you and your auntie Janice was back at home. And I had this idea, I remembered, you know what? 
and I felt like my energy kind of like speeding and I was like, I needed to slow down for a second. And that idea of thought, let me slow down, let me go grab a cup of coffee and then let me watch like a little, let me look up something on YouTube, like a documentary about how coffee's made. Oh, I, you probably told me that, but I forgot about that. I did that. tell you that and I yeah. did that and, I, and it was such a great experience. And I've done that a couple more times over the last year to where whatever I was eating, like I've done it with pistachios, I'd look up like a, pist or, or even like, I'm on Netflix and I find documentaries about certain foods. I'll go try to find those foods in our house because it's like learning where they come from, yeah. like cacao and all of that. I watch a documentary I about it also. One. And then while you're eating it, you just gain this deeper appreciation for it. That's so true. And you know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of the YouTube person that lives in, I want to say she lives in Japan and she makes her own food. She lives on the land with her grandmother. And she goes and she, you know, she picks the fruit, she stirs it up outside and cooks it and chops it up. And like, every, she makes her own clothes. She uses the dye from flowers and rose petals to create makeup. It is the most beautiful experience to watch it and it makes you so grateful you know, to see it and you want to slow down and do those things. I'm like, I want to live in the middle of nowhere and learn how to do that because it is one of those things that it's a process for everything. Right. And it's not only, it, you know, and not, and not only does it make you feel more gratitude for the experience, it also, in my experience, it gives you what we all crave, which is peace, being in the present moment yeah. and feeling good. And I think that's the point of all the things in this book is it it slows you down so much to where you have gratitude for things, but you also get that present moment sense to where you feel peaceful. It's true. I want to put the, I'm going to put the link of that YouTube, um, the YouTuber that made those videos too. Oh, I, I love that, that video. Yeah, I love it. We, we were watching really that about a month ago in, on our, in our yeah. living room and almost I, falling asleep to it. It was so peaceful and it was nice. It's beautiful. Yeah. So this is what we did before we got on the podcast. We were going to pick things that we wanted to read about in this book because each chapter, which is a page or two, has some sort of meaning um, and a daily practice that the Zen monk wrote about. And then Tony had the great idea of, of saying, sometimes we flip to the book. We do this a lot. We'll just go to the book and we'll flip to it and see where it ends up, um, what message we get for the day. So he's like, why don't we just pick some, each of us pick some. So we just flipped to a page and that's what we got for yeah, messages and I'll be, for today. I'll be totally honest. I did that with the first two where I flipped yeah. the random pages, the first two. And then when I did the third one, I flipped to one. I was like, eh, and then I flipped to another, eh, and then it was a third one that I flipped okay. to, but it was still random. So that one, so the third one, but you felt pulled to it. But it was so. all random. Yeah. Mine were all random. I followed directions with well, that one. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so who's gonna go first we'll alternate okay yeah ladies first okay so this is the first one that I chose and it's number 78 it says make someone happy something to enhance your meals so it talks about in Japan how hospitality can invoke the flow of time even at the dining table so in this chapter it talks about how when you're having someone over, you actually can cook great meals that are high quality and it's like a feast when people come over your house and you take one item from last season and one item for, um, let me just make sure I'm not ruining this, two elements. Mm -hmm. One from the past season, depart departing of the moment, so they wanna enjoy that. And then the other one is the season coming so it's almost like impending the arrival of something so, so you got past you got present and you got future on all of those. right so this is interesting and then the, the other ones are includes the previous season the height of the current season and the first of the coming season so there's three there's actually three so for example past, if you're present, in, and future. if blueberries are in season right now that'd be one of the presents right. we're gonna have blueberries there i was for gonna present. think i was thinking of summertime watermelon like you want to make sure that you have watermelon mm -hmm. on the table and then something that was previously, you know, if you were leaving the time of fall, then you'd make sure you have something with pumpkin in it. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought this was really beautiful. And it talks about how, whether it's a meal or some sort of gift you give, try incorporating a sense of flow of time to make your guests happy. 
And I have a thing where I absolutely love giving gifts. Like it makes me, I love receiving gifts. So that's one thing too, but I love giving gifts. And it's something for me to think about too. Like I know with our masterminders, we love sending like a little something to them. And um, even when people come to our retreat, we put something in there, but this is something to rethink about that we can add something from past, present and future. It's a great idea. So I thought that was special. Yeah. You want to go next? That. Yeah, so I'll add mine that kind of goes with that. So mm -hmm. mine, the chapter or the quote in the beginning of the chapter says, do not neglect your meals. Oh, that's so, interesting that you chose that one. Yeah, and that was the third one that I chose to where I picked one, uh, picked one, uh, and then I picked this one. But yeah, okay. it was it was still kind of random. But you didn't know what I chose. So. I didn't know what you chose. No, mm -hmm. you're just sharing it with me now. <laughs> so it's like, so do not neglect your meals. What they meant by this, they talked about how especially here in America, and I'm sure all around the world, it's like this to where we eat, we get breakfast and we're rushing to work. We eat dinner and we're watching TV or we're, we're eating lunch and we're talking with our coworkers. So we're not really taking in our meal. And I think your mom would love this, this part of it too, because <laughs> yeah, she's, she she's passionate about food. Like I love going out to eat with your mommy because she's like, Ooh, look at the pasta. And it like <laughs> anybody you're, I can think of my friend TJ. I can think of my, my other friend Dave who passed away, unfortunately, but he was like that too. And anybody you're around that has that passion for food, does it not make you like the food more? I know it oh, does it yeah. for me. And, and that's what it's about too. So it's talking about just kind of like my story from earlier, like as I was drinking coffee, I was watching a video about how coffee's made. So as you're eating your dinner, really tasting the food, really thinking about how many hands did this food go through to get to my table? Thinking about just the salt on your table, like what all had to happen for that to get here and appreciating all the people down the line that helped get the food here. And then also thinking about the person that cooked the food, which in my household, it's usually me. So Lindsay, think about, <laughs> think about me when you're cooking, when we're eating our dinner, but I you're do. really, I know you do. Know. Really I'm just joking. And we do, we actually do that a lot in our dinner time. Lindsay's yeah. like, what did you put in this? Yeah, I get or excited I, or I to, do that to hear her. how he explains how he put it in. He's like, I do that to her yeah. too. So we, we naturally kind of like, not naturally, I feel like I more started to do this as I heard this idea. So, yeah. so think about that. Next time you're eating, you could either watch a video like I did about the food that's being made or you could think about, visualize the fields that the food was grown in. Um, and you know, do your research on the food that you're actually taking in and be present to it and grateful for the taste and all I of that. I love that. And stop getting annoyed with your foodie friends. That's, yeah, that is true. Some people, Because they're the ones that need to come into I, our life to help us reawaken exactly. this. Exactly, and I love taking photos of food. Like, and I know that's, that's like the thing where everyone's taking a picture of their beautiful food on Instagram. But that's but, great. But it makes me excited yeah. because I, especially when you're eating like good quality food where you feel like it's healthy, yeah. you know? And it looks beautiful because that's part of the chef, like it's art, you know, they're, they're putting their heart and soul into it. And Natalia there's energy in that. Natalia that puts so much love in it. Oh my gosh. It's at the retreats, Natalia, it's amazing what she creates. Yes. And I see her pictures online too at all the events that she does. And she, you could feel the love that she's like, like I'm working with her at the retreat sometimes yeah. to where I'm helping her. And I just feel this passion and love about what she's doing and you could taste it in the food and yeah, it's, it's a powerful experience. It's really beautiful. Okay, so this next one for me is number 82, be grateful for every day, even the most ordinary. So happiness is to be found in the unremarkable. And it talks about the natural order of things. So sometimes we aren't grateful for that. and. They say it may might be um, depressing, but they talked about a Zen monk that was famous for his wit, and he talked about how, you know, you have that thought of um, a grandchild coming into the family and that excitement, and there's a natural order. The parent dies, the child dies, the grandchild dies. And they talked about, um, he actually says, when he read the expression, why have you written something so morbid? But the point of this is to be grateful for the natural order of things. Mm -hmm. So he also talks about enjoying your day and knowing that if it's uneventful, take time to be in gratitude that it wasn't an eventful day. You worked, you went to sleep, you enjoyed your day. It was a simple day. 
So I thought that was pretty powerful to just take that time to slow down and appreciate that and reflect right. on it. All areas of life because sometimes we think, oh, this is good, that's bad. Like that, our birth, we're celebrating, it's amazing. Death, that's like hell, that's the devil, that's bad, that's right, or that's like, mm -hmm. there's this thing about it. So it's like taking in all the good, the bad, everything, and the whole order of it all, right? Is it? That's exactly what they were talking about. Yeah. And they said, like, you don't need to look for happiness. Yeah. It's right there. You're right. not searching for it. You're just enjoying what's right in front of you for your day. Mm -hmm. So I thought awesome. that was a good one. I love that idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. So another one that I did was uh, don't fixate on right or wrong. And I wrote down here, clarity over right or wrong. I was talking to a friend the other day and he said something like that. He said clarity, or what did he say? He said, yeah, clarity over agreements or clarity over being right and wrong. It was one of those two, but the whole point of this is, especially in your personal relationships and all of that, let's forget about like if there's a right or wrong because actually we did our podcast episode last one about this. Mm -hmm. There's no right way to build a business or life Mm -hmm. that you love and we realize this and that's what this is talking about here to where you might think that this is the right way but we live in a universe like we talked about in the last but there's no right way there's a like wh whatever you're believing whatever you're seeing that's right and true for you but there's always that gray area right you got the black you got the white and then you got the gray in between and you and there's an infinite amount of all these different things so when it comes to religion or when it comes to how you're building your business, or when it comes to how you're running your, your marriage, or how you're raising your kids, I think that's a big one. Um, or even like in my industry, coaching. Coaching is an art, you know, and I think that a lot of things are art. There's not like, there's a science to a lot of things too, but everything has an art side to it too, meaning just because you do it this way and it creates the results, it doesn't mean that this person can't do it this way and okay. create similar results, if not True. even better results. So that's the whole point of this chapter is that to let go of being right or wrong. And anytime you feel the energy inside of your soul that you're like, you're trying to prove, no, 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 this is right. This is just take a deep breath, take it all in, and then understand that the only thing that you could do with people is be clear with your communication. And just be clear, clarity over being right or wrong. This is how I feel, it's okay if you don't feel that way, but I just wanna be clear on mm -hmm. this is my point of view. I like that. It's one of those things that's, I feel like for me, when I get into a discussion with someone or they're struggling with some, something, then I'll always say like, you could do it this way and mm -hmm. you could feel more peaceful and sometimes as humans, it could come off as this is the only way. Yeah. But I think when you see something and you're like, oh, I could see the light at the end of the tunnel, it makes it hard. Yeah. So it is about the communication. Yeah. So I think that is important. It is because it breaks like that resistance that you would have otherwise. It, it, it makes that all go away when you come at that, when you come from, because it's never what you're doing. It's the space you're coming from. Mm -hmm. And when you're coming from a space of, Look, I'm just trying to be clear here. What I'm trying to do, people feel that, right? And they're more likely to listen, They'll anyways. Always see the truth in the end. Yeah, exactly. And I exactly. think that's the most important thing. If they feel love, and they know the intention, I think that's yes. the most important thing. Exactly. Okay, that's a good one. Now, my last one that I chose was I love this one. That this was the last one that I chose. Don't put off what you can do today. You cannot regret the future. So. They talk about um, amongst last wishes in this. So this is something that um, he talked about. When I greet my own end, I will strive for as little attachment as I can. I would like to depart this world thinking that my life has been a good one. So it's important to kind of focus on, you know, what if you were on your deathbed, you know, what kind of things do you wish that you did you want to make sure that you're leaving everything that you want to do like you're doing those things you're loving those people you're being um in the moment and enjoying your life when you're on your deathbed what is something you want to you feel in your heart and soul you've been wanting to do you know that you want to do it right now 
and you're thinking that you have to wait to do it because of this or because of that or because of this and you're allowing that fear to stop you you asking them or me I was asking them or you I was just reading this to make sure I'm not missing anything yeah. um, what was the question so right now, what is going with what you said? Like it, when you're on your deathbed, yeah, and you're thinking about all the things that all, that you could have been mm-hmm. done. So I'm asking them right now, what are what's what is your soul telling you yeah, to do that you've been wanting to, the to do right now? Because we're all going to be on our deathbed one day. Mm-hmm. So it's like we think that we have a million years to live, and it's like, well, we today. What do you want to do today? How do you want to show up? I think the the better question would be how do you want to express yourself Mm -hmm. today? Because I think self-expression is powerful. And when we're holding back, we create this resistance because that expression's coming through for a reason. The world needs it. And you're getting in your own way and stopping it from coming through because of fear, because of this or that. So it's like, and you're getting in your own way own way of your own happiness too when you're doing it. I think it. it all comes back to caring what other people think. It always I yeah, think always. that's what it is. Because the times that I've held back or didn't say something or said something and felt guilty, it was always because I cared about what other people thought or felt about me or I didn't want to hurt their feelings. But if you know your true intention, it's almost like having to let go of that feeling. Mm-hmm. So when you are on your deathbed, you have no regrets and you're just going to be yourself and come from a place of love Mm -hmm. um but he said 100 percent of us will die that is our fate as human beings we know this and yet in the face of death we still cling to life so it's almost like kind of letting go to the attachment of the physical world just knowing also when it's our time that it's okay Mm mm-hmm you know that's another point of this it reminds me of uh, wayne dyer always talks about the the story ivan nillage Mm -hmm. i think that's the name of the story too but it's about a lawyer that you know he's high up in the community and he's a great lawyer and everybody's praising him his whole life and then he gets to the end of his life and he's on his deathbed and he has all this resentment towards his wife and different things because he's like and i think his last words were what if my whole life has been a lie I remember that powerful when Wayne explains that Mm -hmm. he explains it a lot better than I do but yeah no you're explaining in a good way and I could hear his voice in my head too Mm -hmm. as you're saying it something to think about yeah so yeah it's going to back with what he's saying don't die with your music still inside so what is the music that's inside of you it's your job to figure that out and to just allow it to come out without caring what other people think without Mm -hmm. getting in your own way and understanding you're a human too so as this comes out you're going to overanalyze a little bit. You're going to have fear. You're going to have a vulnerability hangover. It's good to know all this thing, the nature of the game. It's good to know the nature of the game. When you're playing at this level of this game, it's good to know what happens along the way because then you can anticipate it. Right. That's true. Okay. Okay, you're the last one, right? Okay, so my last one would be every so often, try not to stop or try to stop thinking ever so often. Oh gosh, that's hard. Try to stop thinking. Think about those moments to where when all of a sudden you're just looking at a cloud and you're like in La La Land and your friend's with you. Hey, get out of La La Land. Or that other moment whenever you're at the office to where you're really trying to think about something and you're trying to solve that problem and then you get lost in La La Land again. And you're like, you come back and you're like, wait, what was I thinking? The whole point of this chapter is try to stop thinking because it's between it's in that space of silence whenever you're clear um the best way that i got from it when i was reading the chapter was when we are in the the state of flow whenever we're doing that thing that we love that we've done a thousands and thousands of hours that we could do without thinking because it's the thing i always bring up basketball with me or coaching or teaching and there's a lot of different things that I can do to where I don't have to think about right. it no more because I've done it so many times. Well, you're on autopilot and it's just happening. Yeah, it's I call flowing. it intuitive acting or intuitive playing. So what are those times to where you're lost in that space of no thought and you're just all... It's, it's really powerful. It, it could be when you're painting or whatever because when you're in that space... That's when all of the creative ideas start to pour into you. That's when all the clarity starts to happen. So I think this chapter is really referring to like understanding the nature of thoughts, understanding that we are human beings and we have the ability to think, 
but what it's kind of like a carpenter that has a hammer what is the job of this hammer well i know the hammer should nail mm -hmm. um, nail nails and it should do this but it shouldn't hit glass right you'll break something if you hit a hammer with glass a carpenter knows that mm -hmm. so we're carpenters in our own life we have to figure out what tool is thoughts how can we use thoughts in the most powerful that's true way and the whole point of this chapter is saying we're not using our thoughts to try to figure out everything because some of the things that we're trying to figure out we just need the space to allow god or the universe or whatever you want to call it that's in between that space to come in and here so sometimes we try to do things too much mm -hmm. to where we create the opposite effect that's true and it's reminding me of i like the analogies too um i or the metaphor i it reminds me of the book the surrender experiment because the author talks about how he was so sick of hearing his own voice and he's like oh my gosh he thought of himself when he was sitting having a conversation with someone that he was stressed out because he was thinking about what the next thing that he was going to say was mm -hmm. and he's like I don't want this voice in my head and I'm like oh there's other people out there that actually think about the next thing that they're going to say because they feel awkward with the silence in between the conversation if I'm hanging out with Tony I don't care about silence but if I'm going and talking with other people that maybe I'm not fully comfortable with, then mm -hmm. I'll think about the next thing to say. Yeah. Talk about the weather or whatever it comes out of me. Um, so I think that's important with the silence is he focused in on silencing that part of himself. So there's one side to the silencing mm -hmm. of the mind of not overthinking. And then there's another side like Joe Dispenza. Dr. Joe Dispenza focuses on the scientific piece to it where you can recreate your future by focusing it on your vision instead of focusing so much on the past and the conversations that we've had yesterday or 10 mm -hmm. years ago because the brain doesn't know, it shows in images, it does not know if it's past, present, or future in your thoughts. So we can recreate those thoughts now for the future and your brain will think it's happening right now. Mm -hmm. and so that's powerful. Yes, and that's what's powerful about Joe Dispenza's work is it helps to activate the analytical mind too. So we got the analytical yeah. mind and the creative mind both combined to where we understand the power of thoughts, how we can use thoughts powerfully, how we can use our energy mm -hmm. and the chakras within us. So I think that's really important to understand. It's like you were saying, it's like we're never really taught. I don't remember hearing a lot in school. Hey, do you guys have a voice in your head to where you're thinking about the next thing you're going to say? Right. So it's like we never really got that still along the way unless you do it outside of schooling mm -hmm. to understand that and that's such a powerful thing you know me as a coach that is such a powerful tool in coaching and I think training and coaching over the last um, several years has helped me to really understand the power of silence the power of allowing spirit to come through and to, to really use our thoughts in a way like it like it's a hammer you know that's all it is it's not the end-all be-all trying to figure out everything let's mm -hmm. allow this space and quit trying to think about what we're going to say next. True. I think we've gotten a lot better at that in this podcast alone. I bet if we looked at the beginning podcast, we were both trying to think about, and we probably still do it sometimes, but you know, next a year from now we'll be even better, but we're aware of this. Mm -hmm. So we're starting to get more silent. And I think it, it has a powerful effect on everything. It does. Okay. So this is the book. Go out and get it. Definitely. We will leave the link at the bottom, the art of simple living. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Share with us if you bought the book or if you have any insights from what we shared today. Have an amazing day, everyone. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we did. If you liked it, leave a five-star review on iTunes. And remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel too. If you can think of anyone else that would love this episode, share it with them right now on social media or email. And remember, getting results is a process of learning, applying, and reflecting. Stay consistent and continue to grow every day.